Hello, this is Bill Webb, a.k.a. Billy Indiana. Today I'm going to do a solo playthrough for Medici the Dice Game. This is a sister game to Reiner Knizia's classic Medici and Medici the Card Game. It's produced by Grail Games. Let's get this one to the table. So first let me just show you what's in the box. It is a very small box as you can see here. And we've got the rules, very simple. A little bag of dice. There's five different dice in here and we'll talk about that in a minute, how those work. And then I put some whiteboard markers in here because I've laminated some of the papers. Pencils come with it. We've got a first player token here. And uh, again, there's this, I laminated a few copies of the score pad but then there's this really thick pad of scoring sheets. And uh, yeah, kind of a uniquely colored, painted, designed internal part of the box there. Um, I'll just pull out one of these, and then let's talk about how this game plays. All right. Get everything organized here. Get a tray here for the dice. All right. So in this game, Medici the Dice Game, you basically have two parts of this uh, card that you're filling in, and I'm going to show you the solo play. If you're playing with multiple players, then you would just be each having your own card and filling out your own and trying to get the maximum score. If you're playing as an individual, you play to beat a, a scale, basically, in the back of the book. And so in the rules here for the solo, it tells you, you know, if you score under 80, you're a deck scrubber. And on and on, it gives you what you would be captain, merchant, officer, navigator, uh, depending on how you score. Now, there's two places that you're going to be marking down your score as you go based on how you roll the dice <clears throat> and which um, dice you choose. There are three ships. So this is one ship, and this is a second, and this is a third, and we play it as three rounds. And we're going to get a score for how we fill in the ship, and that'll go in this top box. And then there's this system over here that tracks the monopolies. And so you're trying to get a monopoly in the different herbs and dyes and grains and furs and cloth types over here. And if you are able to achieve monopolies, then you're going to score those here. And each round you'll put the sum right there and then add the ship score to the monopoly score and you get your overall score for each round. And then you're just going to add these three together to get your total score here. Now in the monopolies, if you pass this line right here, there's a plus 10 bonus. And if you pass 20 here, or this line here, you get a plus 20 bonus. And there are little notes here, depending on the number of players. Um, if you're playing with two players, three players, or four players, how things score. Um, and then also how the ships score. But for solo, the scoring is a little bit different. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate. So I think it'll be easiest just to demonstrate the scoring and the play by playing it rather than trying to explain it all ahead. So I'll roll the dice and get things started. So all of the dice have the different types of goods and based on their color, but they also have different numbers on them as well. So right now I've got a gold, and then I've got two grains, a one value and a two value. I've got uh, a spices here at four, and then a furs here at one. And when you're playing in any count, player count, you're going to choose up to three if you're the person that rolled. And then obviously if you're solo, you're always just choosing up to three. And the goal is you're going to put the number value here in your ships, and you're trying to score as many points as possible. In the solo version, if you can score 20 points, you'll get those 20. Anything over 20, if you score 24, you'll get 24 points, up to 30. If you get 30 points, you'll score your actual points, but 30 and above, you'll also get a 10-point bonus on your ship. So you obviously want to try to use the higher numbers to fill your ship. However, there's another side of the strategy here. The colors tell you how you're trading in the goods over here. So the three that you choose for your numbers in the ship are also the three types of goods you're marking about your trading abilities and trying to gain monopolies over here. And so let's just show you how I might choose this one. So I like the gold for the points, and I'll take um, this uh, spices here for four. That's a lot of good points. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose this two. It's not a huge number of points, but that'll get me started in the grain as well. And that'll keep me tied with the AI, because in the solo version, you're actually playing against an AI, so to speak. I, maybe not an AI, but uh, like an Otoma sort of thing. All right, and so I would score the points, and I put five, and then down below you just put the sum, and since it's only one right now, it's just five, and then I put four, and five plus four gives me nine, and then I put two, 
and 9 plus 2 gives me 11. So I'm halfway to reaching that goal of 20 so that I can at least score points. If I don't at least score 20, I don't get any points for the ship this round. And now I have to score my spices or goods uh, for how much I'm investing in that monopoly. So the gold doesn't count for anything in the monopolies, but it's worth a lot of points in your ship, so it's kind of give and take. And then for the spices, these orange ones here, I'm going to mark an X to show that I am trading in spices. And then for grains, I'm going to mark an X showing that I am trading in grain. And now for the automa, I'm going to say, okay, well, they're also trading in grain, and we mark those with a circle. And so we outline that. So we are tied for the monopoly and trading in grain. And then they're also trading in fur, so I'm going to put a circle there. So right now, if the round ended, I would have the monopoly in spices. We would both satisfy the monopoly requirement in grain, but they would have the monopoly in furs. And no one has cloth or dye yet. So that's basically how you play a round. Uh, let's keep going. We'll just, or a, a roll, I guess. And let's go ahead and finish out the first round and explain a few more things as we go. So here we see some new things. You can see these zeros. And so they're worth zero points in your ship, but they are double in terms of trading value in the Monopoly. So I, I'm tempted to take this five because of the points it's going to give me for my ship score, but I'm pretty hesitant to give them both of these zeros because if I do, they're going to start to gain a lot of points ahead of me in terms of the Monopolies. So let's see, maybe I should take, if I, if I give him this two and take the zero, I'm going to get two and he's going to get one and we'll still be tied in the yellow, so that'll be good. And I think I do want the five. Um, I kind of hate to take this zero also. It is going to give him the lead, but I think in this early stage, maybe I should. I want to make sure I at least get 20 points here. So I think I'll take these three. And so then I put my points in. I've got a five, which now gets me up to 16. I've got a zero, which keeps me at 16. And then I've got a two, which gets me to 18. Again, the five doesn't count towards monopolies, but now I've got one in the cloth. And so I get a, an X there and I get two in the grain, so an X and an X. And now for the Automa, they're gonna get a single in the grain, so they're gonna be a little behind me there. They're gonna get a double in the spices. They're gonna take the lead there. All right, so right now, they have the lead in spices and fur. I have the lead in clothing and grain. Now we have the last roll, and this is tricky because you can I can only pick one because the ship's almost full here. So um, I'm going to have to think through this. All right, now the fives here, I just need to get at least two so that I can score the ship. And the fives are kind of nice for me to give to the Automa because they don't get anything, any benefit here in the Monopolies either. So if I take the three or the four, I might be able to capitalize here on some things. So let's see, if I give them the four, they're just going to tie me in the clothing, so I'll still have the lead. Um, if I take the four, they're going to get two of these and pass me up. So I, I, I need to give them the four, um, and then I'll need to give them this one, and I'll keep the three. All right, so I put my three down, which gives me 21 for my ship, which means I'm going to score 21 points for the ship. And again, if I hadn't scored at least 20, no points for the ship that round. And then it gives me one more investment in the yellow. And that's pretty good. I'm kind of pushing on the yellow here. Hopefully I can get some bonuses here in the later rounds. Now these two don't score them anything for the Automa, but they do get a purple, which just ties them. So I'm still gonna earn points in the Monopoly category. And then they're gonna get one in the yellow as well. Now, one thing that I need to mention about the Monopolies for the Automa if they pass this plus 10 in any round, that round, I score nothing for any of my monopolies. So I need to be really careful that they don't build up too much in any category as well. Uh, but that would get me to the end of the first round. And if I look at the monopolies, they've taken this one, so I score nothing there. I don't didn't get any in the die category, so nothing there. I am winning in the grain, so 10 points there. They beat me in the fur, and then I beat them in the cloth. So I got 21 for my ship, and then I now have... Uh, 20 for the Monopoly category. So 41 in that first round. Now, when we go into the second round, we don't erase anything. The Monopoly race stays the same way. And I'm just going to repeat the process, but now my ship's a little bit bigger. I've grown the business a bit and I can trans transport more. So I'll give a little less explanation, more about the strategy um, and just kind of walk through here. So I, I also still want to get the 20 points or more to score the ship. And there's some good high pointers here. Maybe I'll take this five and the four and the zero because that's going to help me start to catch up. I've already got a lead on the yellow, so I think I'll pass on these two. So I'm going to take these, a five, 
a 4 and a 0, so that gives me 5, and then 9, and then 9. And I'm going to add 1 now to the die. So I'm now in the market selling die. I'm going to get a double in the spices. So I take the lead. They're going to come back and tie me, though, with that one. And now they're going to gain another yellow, and they've tied me there as well. And now we're both halfway to the bonus, and I need to make sure they don't get too many yellow. I want to pass that, but I don't want them to. All right, so let's go to the next roll. Again, I've been taking three dice in every roll, except for when I couldn't, and I don't have to. I could choose to take fewer. All right, so here's a lot of big pointers again, five, five, and four. Um, so what do I want to do on the blue? Maybe if I, let's try this. Let's get some points, go big on the points here, and give them those two. So I'm going to go five, five, and zero. Five, five, zero. So that's going to give me 14, 19, and then still at 19. I'm only going to score in the monopolies um, but I'm going to get a double because it's a zero there in the die. And then they're going to get two in the die, but that still leaves me in the lead. All right. And then now I can take two in this next round. All right. And I just need to get one point uh, to get me over the 20 points here. So I need to figure out how can I keep my lead in as many categories as possible. So I could take the three and give him the two. Then we're going to still be tied in the clothing. Oh boy, so that's too bad. They're going to take the lead in the, uh, two, so many spices got rolled. I'll just take the most valuable one. I'm going to have to give them these two. So they're going to take over the lead there, unfortunately. And so I'll take the three and the three. So that gets me 22 and 25. So I'm going to score 25 for my ship. And then I'm going to get a purple and spice. Uh, but they're going to get a purple, so we're going to be tied there. And they're unfortunately going to get two spice, so they're taking the lead. So now as I score the Monopolies, they beat me there. I got 10 points here. I got 10 points here. They beat me there, and I was able to maintain 10 points there. So I was able to get 30 that round. So 55 for round two. And now we move to the round three, and the ship is a little bit bigger. All right. So they're getting a little bit far down on this spice, and I, I'm hoping that I can reach one of these bonuses here. Also, again, if I can get above 30 on my ship, and this would be the best opportunity to, I can then get a 10-point bonus for scoring more than 30 on the ship. All right, woo, lots of gray here. So this might be an opportunity for me to think about points and let them go ahead and take over gray. Um, if I want to really focus on yellow and, and spice, maybe I should just let them have the gray. Let's see. Let's go with this. Maybe I can still stay in competition. So we'll do, I'll take these three, and we'll give the Automa those two. So I'm going to get a five, a four, and a zero. So I've got five and nine and nine. And then in the gray, I'm going to get a one, two, three, one for the four and two for the zero. And they're going to get one, two. So I've managed to stay tied with them in the gray and still managed to score nine points. Not bad. All right, let's go with the next roll. All right, there's another five. Here's the yellow. So I want to push on the yellow here. Let's see. If I give them the gray, they're going to take the lead. If I give them the purple, they're going to take the lead. If I give them the yellow, they're going to tie me. I'll give them the yellow. Hmm. I'll give them the purple, and I'll go ahead and take the gray. So I'm going to go five, four, two. 5, 4, 2, so that's 14, 18, 20. So if I can get 10 more points here, I'd be able to get a bonus. That doesn't earn me anything in the Monopolies, but I get a gray one here, and then I get a yellow one here. It's going to be hard for me to get any of these Monopoly bonuses, so my main strategy might just be making sure I can cover as many of them as possible. They're going to get a purple and a yellow, so they're going to tie me in the yellow, and they're going to take the lead in the purple. So I'm leading three categories, and they're leading two. I know it's probably kind of hard to see the difference between the X's and the O's. It's easier if you use pencil on the paper. It's a little harder with the markers, but I can see them pretty well personally here. All right, so is there any way to get 10 points here? And I could choose to risk it and just take less than three. Uh, the, the risk is the next time I'm going to be able to only take fewer dice, and they're going to potentially score more on the Monopoly. So let's see what we could do. All right, the blue, I have a one lead, so I don't want to give them both blues. So if I keep one of the blues and give them one, um, so I'll keep one and give them one. Then I'm still going to have the lead in blue for Monopolies. If I take the purple, then I'm going to tie them in Monopolies. And then if I take one and give them one, I'm going to tie them in yellow. So I'm not going to be able to catch up on the spices, but I think that's probably the best I can do. And I don't think pushing it another round is going to be helpful. So I did fall short of that bonus in all categories, really. 
Uh, so 23, 26, 28. And so I've got 28 here in this round. And then I'm going to get blue, purple, and yellow. So I've got yellow, purple, and blue. And they're going to get blue and yellow, so they're going to tie me here. In. So if we go back to the Monopolies in this round, they beat me on the Spices, but I was able to take the lead on the die, so that's 10 points. I was able to tie for the lead here, so that's 10 points. Took, kept the lead on Fur, 10 points, tied for the lead there, so 40 points in the Monopolies. So I continued to improve as the game went on that way. 68 overall. And so now I just add these up. So I've got uh, 96, 156, 164, I believe, if I added that correctly. And so that's my final score. If I look at the uh, chart here, a score of 164 puts me in the navigator category. So uh, fourth one down from maximum. So not a bad score, uh, even though I didn't get any bonuses. So you can see if I would have been able to I, I kind of stayed even on these monopolies. If I was able to push one a little bit further and get some bonuses, or if I could have gotten just a few more points on this ship and push that over, some of those bo bonuses might have pushed me up into that higher category. I might have been able to score up in that officer, merchant, or captain category. But that is how you play Medici the Dice Game. Hopefully this was helpful for you to learn how the game plays. Um, let me give you a quick review my thoughts on the game. So the things I really like about Medici, the dice game, is it is super fast. As you can see from this playthrough, five to ten minutes in a solo round, and I can I can play that game, and it's very easy to learn. It's very easy to teach others. My wife and I can play a two-player game in 10, 15 minutes. We can play multiple rounds and do best of three, best of five, something like that. It's so quick and easy. Even if you have a bad round, you might feel like the luck was against you in the way the, die ro the dice rolled. It's not a big deal because it's a short game. You can just try again and see if you can win the next time. Um, if I don't have much time, but I just feel gamery, just feel like I want to play uh, some kind of a game that's quick and I want to maybe roll some dice, this one is a very quick and easy filler. I just keep it close by so anytime i got a few minutes if i just want to i can roll it my wife and i even took this to starbucks and we got a drink we just sat outside at a table and played a few rounds sitting outside at the table you can play it while you're waiting on your food at a restaurant if it doesn't make too much noise with the dice maybe roll them on a napkin or something uh, but yeah this is the kind of game that you could take anywhere it's nice small box and it's very easy um, it makes me want to learn the Medici game and maybe check out the Medici card game as well. So if you've played any of those other games, the original Medici or the Medici card game, let me know what you think about those. Tell me if I should be finding those and getting a chance to play them. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up down below to show me that you liked it, and it'd be great if you'd subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about the way I played the game or if you see any mistakes that I made, leave those comments down below as well. As always, thanks for watching. This is Billy Indiana, signing off. Oh.